Hello everybody, Conti here with another video. How to apply a dissolving particle effect to a PNG image file in DaVinci Resolve 16.2.2. Inside your edits window, hold Ctrl and press I to insert your chosen PNG file to your project. Use Command instead of Ctrl if you are a Mac user. Go to your Media Pool Master Bin. Left click and drag the thumbnail of your chosen image file to your timeline. The PNG file I have chosen for this particular project comprises of the channel logo made up of the blue, white and red colour shades with the rest of the image file transparent, including the sections between the lines inside the C shape. This particular image will stay on screen for 5 seconds. Left click on the end of the edit on your timeline and drag your mouse cursor to resize as you wish. Once you are satisfied with the length of your particular image edit, right click on this edit and select new fusion clip. Selecting the clip attributes icon in the bottom right corner of my image thumbnail, we can see that this particular image file comprises of 24 stills per second with its frame rate. Right click on your new fusion clip and go to open in fusion page. Ensure that the frame reference number is set to zero and I will set this to single viewer so that we can see the appearance of our chosen image at the start of our timeline. Inside your nodes panel, hold shift and press space to open up the select tool window. In the search box at the bottom, go to find P emitter. Select this tool and go to click on add. Note how this new node is not connected to Media In 1 representing our image input and Media Out 1 representing our final video output. In order to be able to connect this particular node to Media In 1, ensure that this is selected first of all. Go to Inspector, go to Style and ensure Style is set to Point and Apply Mode to Add. Go to Region, change Region from Sphere to Bitmap. You should now see a yellow triangle to the left of the P emitter node. Under controls, the quantity of particles coming from your image file is determined by the number variable. In this particular example, I'm going to set this value to 4000. And in order to ensure that the color of the particles reflects those shades used in my image file, I need to set color to use color from region. Left click once on the right side of the line connecting Media In 1 and Media Out 1 to disconnect this. Drag P Emitter 1 to the side of Media In 1. Left click on the grey box next to Media In 1 and drag your mouse cursor to the yellow triangle alongside P Emitter 1. Ensure that P Emitter 1 is now selected. Before the end of my animation sequence, I wish for the particles to stop emitting from the original image on screen. In order to achieve this, ensure that you are referring to the first frame in your image edit. Frame 0 in this case here. Left click on the keyframe diamond icon next to number. This will ensure that this property setting will be applied to the current frame and subsequent ones on your image edit. I wish for the amount of particles emitted from my image file to decrease after the third second mark. As previously mentioned, this particular image file plays at 24 frames per second. Therefore, I will access frame 72. Returning to Inspector, left click on the keyframe diamond icon once again. To mark the final frame in your animation sequence where the number of particles emitted is 4000. I will now jump ahead to the 4th second mark at frame 96. Inside Inspector again, decrease number to 0 to prevent any new particles emitting from your image. The keyframe diamond icon should automatically be highlighted in red. Press Shift and Space to open up the Select Tool window again. And go to add the P Directional Force tool. Ensure that P-Directional Force 1 is selected. 
go to Inspector and underneath Controls, set the strength to 0 0.15. Avoid using too high a value in this particular property so that the particles stay close together when they are floating on screen. Since I want the particles to be floating towards the top right corner in my particular project, I'm going to set the direction to 17. To create a three-dimensional look where it appears that the particles are flowing towards and away from the viewer, I'm going to change direction Z to minus 58. With your directional force node selected, press shift and space, and go to add P turbulence. Go to Inspector. Random C generates a random starting position for the particles that will make up your animation. To increase the amount of random place allocations on the screen for my particles, I'm going to set this particular variable to 355. I will also increase the speed at which the particles flow horizontally, vertically and three-dimensionally by increasing each of the three strength variables to 0.33. Keep density as 10. Ensure that the P turbulence node is still selected. Hold shift and press space. In order to ensure that these particles are rendered so that they appear on your final video, we need a render tool which can be found with P render typed in the search box. Select this and go to add. Inside inspector, I will change blur 2D to 1 to make the particles appear less pixelated and Glow 2D to 0 0.3 to make the small particles stand out more on my dark background. Now go to connect the P Render node to your Media Out 1 node. At present the image file appears very grainy on the video. In order to display your original image file at the start of your animation, what we can do is apply the following technique. Return to your edits window. Inside your media pool master bin, go to find the original image file that you inserted to your project timeline. Click and drag this to the video track directly above your fusion clip. Ensure that the video track position and width of this particular edit of your original image file is the same as that of your fusion clip. Select the edit of your newly inserted image with the red playhead located at the start of your project timeline at zero seconds. Go to Inspector. Left click once on the keyframe diamond icon next to Opacity. Since my particle emission decreases from the third second onwards in my particular project, what I can do with my image file on the second video track in my project is make this particular image completely transparent by the third second mark. To move the red playhead to this particular point, I can hold in K and press L on my keyboard. Holding in K and pressing J moves your red playhead back to an earlier stage on your timeline. With your original image edit still selected, go back to Inspector and decrease the opacity from 100 to 0. The keyframe diamond icon here should automatically be selected in red. Thank you very much for watching, I hope that video was useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about future uploads on this channel, please like, share and subscribe. Join me soon for another video, take care.